Hello there, friends. It has been again. <clears throat> uh, my apologies for my previous attempt at this video. Who knows uh, what was going on. But in any case, this is a video for vector calculus. We are taking a look at um, we're taking a look at section 16.3, which is titled <clears throat> Conservative Vector Fields. A better title for it might be the Fundamental Theorem of Line Integrals. So <clears throat> when we're doing vector line integrals, you'll note that particular way that it was written, that it was the f vector uh, dotted with dr vector. And what that meant for us was that we would evaluate the f vector, the field, at r vector of t, and then we would dot it with r prime of t. So if we have a conservative vector field, that's because it's it has a potential function, which you can take the gradient and get that vector field f, which means that if you've got a conservative vector field, that you can have this gradient of f evaluated at r of t dotted with r prime of t. Depending on who you had for calc 3, <clears throat> um, they may very well have explained that to you in terms of the derivative evaluated at a, an f, which in this case would be the potential function. Uh, sorry. So a, a potential function f evaluated at r of t, when you take the derivative, the chain rule is gradient f evaluated at r of t dotted with r prime of t. Which means if you have a conservative vector field, really fundamental theorem of calculus sort of things apply. All right. So let me share screen here and uh, make a quick point about how these things come together. And then we'll do some examples, all right? So this is that part I was mentioning here, that if you have something that's a conservative vector field, then it is in net effect as though you're using a chain rule here. And so since it's like using the chain rule, doing an integral just undoes a derivative, right? All right, so we have the following are equivalent statements. This is one of the big structures that you see in mathematics where you have a list of different facts, all of which are basically the same fact put in different ways. So F is conservative. In a simply connected, we have to come back and talk about what that means. F is conservative in a simply connected region R. Or F has a potential function, which is going to be continuous in that simply connected region R. Or when you take a line integral on any curve with the two endpoints P and Q, Oh, which I just noticed that I have apparently written the letters backwards here. Let me get that real quick. Q is the place we ended. P is the place we started. All right. But you can evaluate it just by subtracting the function at the, at the end point minus the, the function evaluated at the start point. And then finally, that if you have a simple closed curve, in other words, it makes a loop, um, in a simply connected region R, that you're always going to get zero. Now, if you think about this one in terms of that one, if you've got a simple closed curve, if you made a loop, your start and your end point are the same points. So when you subtract them, you should get zero. So seeing that these two are equivalent is really no problem. And seeing that uh, these two uh, are equivalent is really just an application of the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus together with the chain rule. And so being able to see these two being the same really just has to do with um, the whole thing about mixed partials turning out to be the same. So 
So it's not a big surprise, but it has some nice consequences. Now, here I have said simply connected region over and over again. What do we mean by a simply connected region? If I just said connected, that means pretty much what you think. If, if things are not connected, that means that you can break them apart into two pieces. So if they're connected, it means that it's in one piece. But then the particular kind of connected that we're referring to here of being simply connected means that if I were talking about maybe this region here, I'm not allowed to have a hole burnt into my region, okay? A region that has a hole in it is not simply connected. And the reason that that's important for what's going on here is that we could hypothetically have some hole burnt in our region here that um, the potential function just isn't valid at. You know, it's got a division by zero, a square root of negative one, something that goofs it up. And because of that sort of problem possibly cropping up, that could mean that we can construct weird examples where when you've got this closed loop, it turns out that you don't get an integral turning out to be zero going around it because the, um, the vector field that you're talking about doesn't quite meet our definitions and stuff. So, all right. So here we're going to tackle um, actually doing one of these right and and we're going to take advantage of what we know so we're going to talk about this uh, uh, potential function here and we are going to do the integral across this curve of the gradient of f dot dr so i'm going to off to the side here just write down gradient of f and i'll have to go through and say when i do that with respect to x i get 2xy when I do it with respect to y, I get x squared. When I do it with respect to z, I get negative one, okay? Then if this is my r vector here, then the r vector prime of t is just gonna be one, one, zero. And that says that this integral across c of gradient f dot dr vector is going to be equal to an integral from 0 to 1 of, let's see, 2xy. So x is t and y is t, so 2t squared, and then comma x squared, so that'll be t squared, and then 0, I'm sorry, I messed that up, and then minus 1 and then dot that with the r prime, one, one, zero, dt. And uh, see what we've got there. Um, I feel like I've lost my place somewhere as I went along. Um, yeah, this turns into an integral zero to one, two t squared plus t squared, so three t squared dt. That'll be t cubed, zero to one. So that'll be just one, okay? All right, now then doing this next one here. So that was curve number one. I should put a sub one there. Now doing this next one here, we need to notice that this goes from zero, zero, zero to one, one, zero. And so did this one. Okay. Uh, so since uh, gradient of F is conservative, um, uh, the integral C2 gradient F dot dr vector is independent of path since C1 and C2 have the same 
endpoints, the integral across C1 of gradient f dot dr vector equals one as well. Okay. Most of the time when you're using one of these, you wouldn't write out all those details, but you know, you're in a math class. <clears throat> um, so there's not really much more to it than to explain your reasoning and stuff. So I just want y'all to give a little bit of explanation for that sort of thing. If you've already done the integral and you know it's conservative. Okay. All right, yay. <clears throat> so uh, the next one to attack here. So sometimes you'll be given one where it's not as obvious that you have something that is um, that, that's conservative. But for this one here, we can check and we would get uh, the curl of this vector field that would be 2xyz comma x squared z comma x squared y. And I am going to beg off and not do that work because it's stuff from the previous <coughs> lesson. But you calculate that curl and you end up getting zero, 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 not just zero at some particular value of x, y, and z, but zero for all x, y, and z. Everything has to cancel out. So as soon as we know that that is a conservative vector field, then we can tackle uh, finding this uh, integral uh, the easier way, we will say, okay, I am starting at 0, 0, 1. And I just got that by sticking in t equals 0. And then I'm going to 4, let's see, uh, pi over 2, so 1, and then 2 squared, so 1. Okay. So I'm going from 0, 0, 1 to 4, 1, 1. And uh, I am going to go ahead and integrate my 2xyz dx and get x squared yz. And I should say plus g of yz in case there's other pieces that show up there. I would integrate my x squared z dy and get x squared yz plus, I'll say, h of xz, in case other pieces show up there. And I have written a little, oh man, I've written a little bit too big, so I want to just scoot this stuff over here. And now I will integrate x squared y dz and I'll get x squared yz plus, let's see, I guess k of xy, right? Now, you can see that the common part of all of them is the x squared yz. None of them showed up an extra one. So the f of xyz that we want, the potential function is going to be x squared yz plus c, okay? And then you can go along here and say the integral across C of 2xyz dx plus x squared z dy plus x squared y dz is equal to, now you don't have to write anything with the uh, one dimensional integral now, you can literally just go ahead and say x squared yz, that's your potential function evaluated from 0, 0, 1 to 4, 1, 1. And I can't write. All right. And so now plug in the 4, 1, 1 there, and you get 16 times 1 times 1 minus, and then you'll have 0 times 0 times 1, so minus 0. So we end up with a 16 out of that. So not real rough to do. The hardest part of it, uh, depending on your viewpoint, is either checking the curl there because doing all those damn derivatives or doing this integration and making sure that it all fits together. So, 
So that's a couple of things there. And um, now let me check this just to see. Yeah, it's my last example here. So this one is just phrased differently and it's got a force field on it. Um, since I'm a sci-fi fan, uh, make the jokes that you wanna make, but you take your force field and you're asked to find the work done by F on a particle moving from one, one to three, four. So this time, because you've got something that's two dimensional, we would think about our M being X squared and our N being the Y squared. And then we would say that the M sub Y is gonna be equal to zero and the N sub X is gonna be equal to zero because those match up, then we have the F being conservative. And so now we can think about that we need to integrate X squared DX and have one third X cubed plus some function of Y, but that likewise you would do the integral of Y squared DY have one third y cubed plus some function of x. We can see that there is, uh, there is no common shared function there. So it will turn out in this case that the g of y is that one third y cubed and the h of x is that one third x cubed. So uh, our f of xy that's our potential function is just going to be one third of x cubed plus y cubed. Very technically, we should write a plus c, but then we end up not using it because of the purpose we put it to. So we want to integrate across this curve this x squared y squared d dot dr vector. And we can just say one third x cubed plus y cubed, evaluate from one, one, two, three, four. And so we end up with one third of uh, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, minus one third of one cubed plus one cubed. All right, so that means we have uh, one third of 91, yeah, and minus one third of two, so 89 thirds. Boom, we're done, okay? So that is essentially what you do on these. If you have something that is uh, a closed loop, you recognize it's a closed loop and it's conservative and you just say zero and you don't have to do anything. Uh, but if you have something that's not a closed loop and it's conservative, then you can either do things using the potential function or just go ahead and integrate it if it turns out to be something super easy to do the integration for. So six of one, half dozen of the other. All right, that's it. I uh, will see you in class.